enjoy this upper view of my nostril. Okay. Oh. Uh, Hey, TikTok, all right. You know what, we are figuring this stuff out. Let me tell you right now, we now know how to get Michael Q. Powell, that would be Mike Q. Powell, our creative contributor, onto the first Creative Corner with Frame Your Feline on TikTok. This is all live, and so we're gonna make this thing work. The reason why we couldn't get Mike Jolly on yet, Mike apparently doesn't have a thousand followers yet on TikTok, which is absolutely ridiculous. We're gonna make sure that he gets a thousand followers by this video alone, okay? All right. So he is on as Michael Q. Powell? Okay? I think he's Michael Q. Powell. Or we're gonna- Quentin. We'll, we'll, find, we'll find out, we'll find out. We'll find out when we get him on this live <laughs> TikTok, but we're getting people climbing on board right now. And uh, again, I think what we need to do, two things, Christina. A short we, introduction. We're gonna do a short introduction of who we are and then we're gonna do our beverage oh, yes, of the right. show. Our show beverage, we do this on every episode. We have a beverage of the show and uh, maybe you can take a sip with us when we take our sip, okay? <laughs> or you can send a comment and let us know what you're drinking. Yes, um, okay. So first of all, who are we? We are Frame Your Feline. We have a product called Frame Your Feline, oddly enough, and the how it works is you attach our feline frame ensemble to the wall and it makes your cat look like a work of living art in your house or home. Isn't that beautiful? And the backdrops are interchangeable. The frame styles are interchangeable. We have three frame styles currently. We've got gallery gold, which you see right above me. You've got the traditional cherry wood and we also have a third feline frame a uh, style called contemporary, contemporary silver. silver. Yes, and that is Winnie yes. climbing into the frame. All right, so we are, we, that's who we are. My name is Brian. I'm Christina. And we are the co-creators of Frame Your Feline. And speaking of creators, this live is called Creative Corner with Frame Your Feline. And we have, we are so lucky, we have one of our, uh, creative contributors to Frame Your Feline, who has amazing artwork panels of his photography and other works. And we're gonna discuss how he does it, how he's able to do it, and what his inspiration is. Um, but no, he did these not. Are not. These are not his, it's Valentine's Day, if you're watching the replay. So happy Valentine's happy Day. Happy Valentine's Day. If you're live joining us, um, but we wanted to start with uh, showing off our new Valentine's Day artwork panels. That's right, so show your cats some love. Get Aww. them a feline frame ensemble. <laughs> and by the way, we have a sale going on right now. Uh, no, people. no coupon code needed. Go to frameyourfeline.com and we have $100 off all of our feline frame ensembles. So go there before it goes away, which will be in a couple of days. Um, okay, now without any further ado, before we bring our guest on, let's see, what is our beverage of the show? Christina, oh, what are we having today? Today we are having, I thought that this might pour out pink. What is Because it? it's rhubarb and strawberry soda. Rhubarb and strawberry soda. That's, from Trader Joe's. Is that a spring thing or a summer drink? What is that? It was in our vitrine and I thought okay. we would have it and I was hoping. By the way, kids, she said <laughs> vitrine, not latrine. Vitrine, okay? It's, it's totally different. Totally cocktail mixers. different. So, uh, but we're not having cocktail yet. No so cocktails. It's too, it's too early for us right now. So I was hoping that this was going to pour out pink or red because it's strawberry. Oh, look at the hearts. We're getting hearts right now. But, no, aw, it didn't turn out nope. pink or red. Okay, well. What are we gonna drink for St. Patrick's Day? I don't know, something mm -hmm. green, I hope. <laughs> okay, so uh, let's see. Have cheers. A, well, cheers, happy Valentine's Day. Happy Valentine's Day to Ooh. you, and let's take our, as Scott Adams would say, simultaneous sip. Here we go. Mm. Refreshing. That's good, that's good. That's good. All right. Oh yeah, more people All right. joining us. Awesome. We got some hearts, thank you. Thank you, love the hearts. Okay, so we had a little fiasco as we tried to get our <laughs> guest on, uh, but you know what? We figured out a way to cheat the TikTok system. <laughs> when somebody doesn't have a thousand followers, how do you go live with them on TikTok? It's easy. You do this. <laughs> All right, we got them. We got them right here, ladies and gentlemen. It's an O-ring too. 
We're, we're O-ringing this guy. Oh, his... great. Look at that. So that is Mike Powell. He's one of our amazing creative community members. He has a crazy amount of photography and other works uh, as artwork panels for our, uh, uh, our feline frame family to choose from for backdrops for their cats. And so we're gonna discuss those. And one of the ones that, uh, one of the categories that Michael has a, a lot of work in um, that is available to each and every one of you to enjoy seeing your cats in front of is the wildlife category on Frame Your Feline. So we'll, let's take a look at one of these images, which is really cool. It is Eagle in Flight. And look at that. Look at this. And by the way, for those who don't do not know, these uh, artwork panels are on this semi-rigid um, thermal uh, plastic. Th thermal plastic sheets of it's two, it's 23 inches wide by 18 inches high. So it's an oversized print. There you go. There's Look at how I have a big head. I've got a big head. So <laughs> this true. This shows you how big the artwork panels are. Um, and so Christina is going to put those in there and, and we're going to tell us all about it. Tell us about your eagle photography. I noticed that you take a lot of eagle photography. Where do you take these pictures and how do you capture them without them looking blurry? <laughs> <laughs> well, that, that, you want me to give away my trade secrets? Yes, <laughs> Go, please. Well, see, I, I live in Northern Virginia, um, not too far from the Potomac river and we have a lot of eagles along the Potomac River. Um, one of the wildlife refuges refuges where I like to take pictures is called Occoquan Bay National Wildlife Refuge. And there's at least three active eagle nests, so we have eagles with us throughout the entire year. Right now, it's almost it's just about nesting season, so the couples which stay together for life are together now, and. Um, Soon we'll be producing eggs where they'll be sitting on the nest. So I know where to look for eagles. Um, the problem I have, though, is that eagles are really fast and they have better eyesight than I do and quicker reactions. So I have to try to spot them before they spot me and anticipate when they're going to take off so that I can get a picture like that. Um, I have a long telephoto lens, which is part of the equation, and I usually have it set for a pretty high shutter speed so that I can try to capture it. The real challenge, though, is to keep the picture in focus and the eagle inside of the frame. Um, and then the eagle has to cooperate by having his wings in the right position. So I usually try to fire off about five shots a second for a few seconds to try to catch him as he zooms on by. I see. Wow. Okay. So it's the shutter speed. Um, shutter speed is one of the keys, uh, but you don't, but that's only one of them. Uh, the real challenge is to keep, to keep the eagle when it's in, in the frame, because when you have a long telephoto lens, it's like looking through a straw and trying to find the right part of the sky where the eagle is when you're looking through a straw is a challenge. Yeah. Uh, you, and so there's yeah. a lot of hand-eye coordination involved, which kind of takes practice. Um, that, so I get a lot of practice at this time of the year at trying to track the bird as it's flying by. It's kind of like some hunters do as they're trying to track birds as they're flying by. Um, and it's duck season now, so there are occasionally shotgun blasts going off. Oh. Um, I, in the wildlife what? Not inside the refuge. They're all headed pointed towards the water, but I've been, been within about 10 yards of a uh, shotgun going off, and it's a little bit disconcerting and destroys the uh, sort of the zen part of my photography. Yeah. Wow, that's, uh, who knew your job was dangerous? Uh, it, potentially dangerous. Fortunately, I don't have to wear orange on that part. That was my next question. During deer hunting season, <laughs> though, I'll wear orange because in these same uh, refuges, sometimes they have hunters in the trees because they're allowed to do uh, archery hunting for deer. And um, I don't want to look like a deer. No, no, no you, you definitely don't. Uh, so, so, so Holly, Holly jumped from one frame to another and she actually like sniffed the eagle for a second. I don't know if you got to see that. <laughs> I'll see it on the replay. But the cool, the, the cool. The, eagles, yeah. the, the real challenge is sometimes to catch them when they're going down into the water to, to grab a fish or on occasion a duck. 
Um, I learned this winter that they also will go for ducks, which are easy pickings, uh, especially if the water happens to be frozen. Um, yeah, this is this is where the conversation is getting very dark. Remember, this is <laughs> this is this is a Valentine's Day show, so let's let's talk uh, about love. Let's... Uh, well, the uh, right <laughs> but this time of the year they are though. You you see eagles. Um, one of my friends got a picture of the eagles mating, but ooh, ooh. that's probably not appropriate. For this <laughs> got it. Okay, so let's move on. Let's take a look here. What else do we got, Christina? This is. Ah, yes. Butterf Look at that. Butterfly Lunch. That's the name of this artwork panel, Butterfly Lunch. And um, so you take, so so that one is in our, uh, the eagle. You can put that one in, Christina. Okay. The eagle is in our wildlife category um, in the artwork panels. The Butterfly Lunch is in our nature category. The colors are are amazing in that. It, it really doesn't do justice when you see it through TikTok, but the oranges, the greens, the, the, the yellows, the colors that just come through are very vibrant. Um, so your, your pictures are just absolutely stunning. There's a big difference between capturing a butterfly and capturing an eagle, no? Yes, um, the de de different lens, uh, same camera, but different lens. I was using a macro lens for the butterfly. Um, and this is especially cool because the color coordination between the orange and black monarch butterfly and the orange, I believe it's a Mexican sunflower, um, but the, the, the oranges worked really, really well together. That's something you can't really plan. Um, and in fact, the kind of photography that I tend to do most of with wildlife and nature photography is something where you can't plan what's going to, what you're going to uh, shoot or um, get the subjects to pose for you in the way that you'd like to have them pose. So this is a, you know, when I saw the butterfly land, I had just a few seconds in order to take the picture and try to frame it up in the most photogenic way that I could. But this is one that's, you know, qualifies as a pretty picture that most people will like when i shoot some other insects or spiders um spiders are one of those subjects where people either love them or hate them but there is i think uh, you've got one of the really cool jumping spiders yeah you yeah the there's background. a there's a picture that's in the nature category um where it's a it's a macro view so that it's a it's a spider but you see the hairs on the legs and the face and it looks like, almost like a monster, right? Because <laughs> it's well, yeah, it was it was a jumping spider. Jumping spiders have like eight eyes scattered in a row across their entire face with these huge eyes. Whoa. And um, this, I, fit, I think, it's the one that has the the um, jumping spider that was on my car. And I happen to have an orange car, an orange Kia Soul, so that makes for a very nice backdrop for any subjects uh yeah you would you get, would i can't get him to cooperate but to pose always in the most photo, photogenic positions well it's kind of cool because you you wouldn't know that the photo was taken on a car of all things <laughs> right i didn't know that yeah the spider the spider is only although it looks frightening to some people the spider is only like half an inch in size um, so it, it's really little yeah it's it, it's a but the the detail that you have on it. I just, I'm pulling it up right now. Again, if you go to frameyourfeline.com, you go to artwork panels, go down to nature. And if you scroll down, you'll see this spiky spider is what it's called. And the detail. Oh my gosh. The hairs. Yeah. Like it's insane. <laughs> it's insane. When you look at it, it looks it looks like a, it's challenging you. It looks like a monster that was designed by industrial light and magic. <laughs> it's frightening. It, it, the, these spiders, when they're looking right at you, they assume a pose that to me looks a lot like a sumo wrestler might have. It's yeah. Like very confrontational. Except instead of just putting, you know, stomping two legs and putting their arms down, they've got like four or eight legs to be able to uh, just put them all down at the same time but it's that's a case where with a macro lens you you kind of like discover a whole new world that you, you don't see with the unaided eye um and the same thing with a telephoto lens I, I like to share 
with people sort of my view of, of the world, you know, sort of seen through my lenses. Um, and it's a, it's a kind of a cool thing that people don't always look for, much less see. Um, you have to kind of like, my, one of my secrets is to slow down uh, and move slowly. A lot of people want to walk on by really quickly, and so they miss out on all the cool stuff. And then they say, how do you, how in the world did you see all that stuff? <laughs> and I'll stroke my beard because I have a beard right now and yeah. say, and how is it that you do not see that yeah. stuff? <laughs> shame on you. That's what you should shame on you. <laughs> well, no, it's, that, that's, I mean, if there's one secret is to, is to move slowly and cautiously and constantly scan your horizon. And it can, you can't do that if you have a, you know, a phone in your face and a earbud in your ear. So, true, true. Let's move on. Better be electronically disconnected when you're out taking pictures. Okay, here we go. We're going to talk about this. This is also in our wildlife category, and they it's called Bluebird Lunch. Look at that, right? Look at that seed. Look at that moment. <laughs> yeah, you your ability to capture these moments in wildlife. Uh, that Bluebird Buffet. Yeah, it's called Bluebird. Yeah, I knew there was alliteration there. Bluebird buffet. You, you capture you capture them eating. There's a you also have a squirrel, uh, one on our site oh, yes. in wildlife where it's called a squirrel's treasure, and it's on it's like a wooden stump or something, and it's got this huge nut in its mouth. And what's so funny is one of our um, one of our users or. Yeah, Framer Feline Custom Community. Community. Um, Hobie and Turbo, right? Yeah, they they got the Squirrel's Treasure artwork panel. And <laughs> what's hilarious is it's kind of like the eagle. It's in such a position that when the cat's laying down in the feline frame, the eagle looks like it's pulling the cat up. But in the, the Squirrel's Treasure, where the, the, it looks like the, the squirrel is... Biting on the cat's <laughs> neck. It's a hilarious photo. <laughs> and, one of, and one of their cats is a huge Maine Coon, right? And yeah. the other one's a Bengal. So it's really funny to see this huge Maine Coon with a squirrel on its back. Ready to take a chomp. Look at these three. Look at Look us at three. We, we made it happen. You know, at, it's too bad, TikTok. Yeah. We beat the system. Well, one, of the, one of the things about taking pictures of wildlife, though, is that you have to try to get them when they're um, when they're somehow occupied with something else. And eating is one of those things. Is they while they're eating, they tend to be paying attention to that, and so they may let down their guard a little bit and not immediately run away or fly away when they're no. eating. When they're eating. When they're eating. So so that's a that's a good moment. The but it's sort of like taking a picture of people when they're eating. You have to be careful to catch them in the right moment so it, or else it looks really bad. Yeah, Christina constantly takes pictures of me while I'm eating pizza, you know, or a taco. I got my head... Messy eater. Yeah, messy. Yeah, and so, so yeah. but, that, but it, it's trying to get that uh, moment when they're sort of like, as, as the, the uh, bluebird picture has, when they're sort of in mid-bite where the food is in the air... Or when it's like great blue herons, while they toss a fish up in the air in order Ooh. to swallow it whole, if you can catch the fish in midair, that's really good. Wow. Or this past week, I shot a picture of an eagle that had caught a fish, but then dropped it. And I had a picture of the fish in midair and the bird looking down. Oh. So uh -oh. uh, it was an it was <coughs> an eagle that hadn't learned to fish very well yet. That's awesome. That's awesome. You have to start somewhere, right? Yeah. All right, let's move on. Uh -oh. So, uh, outside, I think we're going... We're going to take a trip. <coughs> Let me see. Oh, okay. So, outside of your nature photography and your wildlife, you also do uh, structures and, and scenery kind of images. This one is a picture... It's called Sunrise on the S S Sen. Sen. <coughs> I need a sip. Your drink. <laughs> Hold on. Cheers to you. This is Notre Dame, right? That is Notre Dame before the fire. 
Right? Oh, no, that's Notre Dame. After, after the, the fire, fire, I think. It is. He said 2019. Oh, well, I thought it was yeah, 2020. It's after the fire. Oh. Um, if you look carefully, you might see the scaffolding. Oh. In the back. Um, but, yeah, it's a... Uh, and from this angle, you can't tell. There, Notre Dame used to have this spire that stood up even higher than the towers, uh, which is gone now, unfortunately. <coughs> but, but, yes, so the... I, I love Paris. I was a French major in college. I studied lots of French poetry. Spent my junior year in Paris. I love to visit the city. And um, I changed the actual gear that I carry with me when I'm traveling overseas because normally I have a long telephoto lens to shoot eagles, but it's hard to carry that around in a big city. And you're, I'm very conscious of the fact that people are, you know, if I put down stuff while I'm traveling, it may disappear. Yep. I have a smaller kit, and I take more landscape and cityscape shots. It's really cool in Paris, to, which is a very walkable city, to take pictures from the bridges, because lots of bridges across the river, and to get up early enough to see sunrises like this, So, and sunsets. So I, uh, I was sort of like, uh, you know, sort of mesmerized by the city, which is known as the City of Lights. Uh, yeah. <clears throat> well, the the pictures you take are stunning. I love I love France too. I eat French fries as much as I can. Um, and French toast. And French toast. Yes. Yeah, so French fries are Belgian, and you're Belgian. That's true. So, but they're so French. And, and the, uh, I have the advantage of still speaking pretty fluent French, so um, that 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 helps an awful lot in the city. Um, to get around uh so occasionally i would i would sort of like hear rather rude comments by english-speaking tourists who didn't realize people around that might understand that <laughs> um okay so uh we just had a little calamity our uh, our tuxedo cat. our tuxedo cat just knocked over every piece of electronic equipment i had on the table that's tethering this this line here um okay so let's let's see what the next Ah, yes. Another one from France, but Let's see. different. Ah, this is from France, too. Look at this image. Um, let me pull this up so I get the name correct here. So this is in our city kitty category. And if you follow As Raging Loons here on TikTok, she has featured this one in her in her feline frame. Yes, we have almost a million views. So this is video. this is called per, this is called Parisian Street at Night. Originally, I had Parisian Street at Night illuminated by lights shining on water that is on the street, but it was too long of a title, so it's now just Parisian Street at Night. Um, now, there's something personal about this picture. Where did you take this? Um, yeah. The, this was actually uh, Rue de Montorgueil, uh, which is a pedestrian street in a pedestrian area of the city. Um, I, when I went to Paris in 2019, actually when I went 2011, uh, found places to stay on Airbnb. Uh, and in this case, the little green door to the side was the entry to the apartment that I was staying in, except it was the entry to the stairway that led up to the sixth floor apartment um, that I was staying in. No elevator, narrow winding stair. Um, take it. So I definitely got my exercise while I was going there. Uh, but it had a balcony that looked out on the city oh, um, wow. or out on, on that very street. And it was it was sort of wonderful experience. A, a apartment that was used as an artist studio when I was. Um, when I was there initially, he had a friend meet me at the apartment because he had an exhibition going on in China at the time. So it was it was really cool. It was sort of a a, a way to, to unleash even further my sense of creativity, um, which is you know allows me to sort of like see the kinds of scenes and look at light and say oh, I really want to capture that. I want to capture what I'm seeing and. Um, that's really what I'm trying to do in photography in general is to capture the beauty that I see and to the, 
by doing it a lot, by taking lots and lots and lots of pictures, I can see a scene like that night scene and know how do I set my camera in order to be able to capture a scene like that. It's, um, <clears throat> it's stunning. And it's a popular backdrop for yeah. our Frame Your Feline customers uh, to order. Um, again, this one is called Parisian Street at Night. It just looks so cool with the cat in there when they're looking out at you. Um, <clears throat> There's little Holly and Winnie. Winnie wants in. <laughs> She's not happy. And, and she... that, one, that one, like so many of the other prints that are available, looks really good even when the cat's not there. Uh, right. which, is, I... which is one of the nicest things is that it's a you know, beautiful frame beautiful backdrop if the cats decide they don't want to go in there right away it still looks nice and you don't have to like hide it no i think that well that yeah that's the that's the feedback we get from is how great it is with or without a cat inside you know um they the the frame along with the beautiful artwork panel it's a win-win you know, even when the cats are not in, in it. Um, and that, that so. is the gallery gold. And then this is the traditional cherry wood. And then we also have a contemporary silver. Frame, right. Yeah. And, the, and the frames are interchangeable, meaning you could just swap out the frame styles. Once you have the feline frame ensemble, you can swap out the style of frame anytime if you simply just order a frame by itself, <clears throat> which you can get in the accessories area, which is cool. And you, uh, can, you can order the prints afterwards, even after you've gotten your frame, if you want some more, right? Yeah, so, so the way it works is um, every feline frame ensemble comes with the feline frame style of their choice and two artwork panels of their choice as well. But they can always order more artwork panels um, wh while they are ordering their initial feline frame ensemble, or they can always order any time on our website, just the artwork panels, So, which is kind of cool. Um, <clears throat> speaking of which, we have lots of holiday themed backdrops as that well. That we've just so, uploaded. Yeah, so check those out. Okay. Right, so you have new ones all the time, right? Yeah. yeah. Yep. It's, it's, uh, uh there's never a dull moment. <laughs> we, we always have, we have a bunch of, uh, uh, St. Patrick's Day back, backdrops that are currently available. And our, and our users have also sent us requests like, hey, do you have something like this? Hey, do you have something like that? And oftentimes we say, let's look at the search area on our website on the top toolbar and let's type in some keywords and you may find something that you overlooked. Mm -hmm. um, but then we're also adding constantly. Michael and I saw each other a couple weeks ago. Um, we were both in the Boston area. And when I was there, I shot two of the oldest cemeteries because we have a large contingency of fans who love cemeteries. So I and shot ha Halloween. Yeah, yeah, some very spooky, uh, the, the oldest cemetery in the US I shot and the oldest garden cemetery I shot, Mount Auburn. So, you know, we're always like, oh, let's go find that. Yeah, because who wouldn't want to see their cat in front of a gravestone? <laughs> sure. No, they're like cherubs. Sure. Cherubs and angels. You haven't seen it yet. Crips. Sure. Cool, like holiday. <clears throat> bows and stuff. Let's ask Michael, how do we find him and his yes. contact information? Yeah, let's, let, we're going to have to wind this so, up. Have one more piece. We'll do one more piece. But Michael, how do people find you? You have a blog. Explain your blog. Okay. Um, I've been doing an almost daily photo blog for the last 10 years, a little over 10 years uh, now at michaelqpowell.com. It's uh, pretty easy to remember most of the things. That I think even on TikTok, I'm, I don't know if I'm Michael Quentin Powell or Michael Q. Powell. I forget who I am. You're Quentin, um, I think. Yes. You're Quentin. I think you're Quentin. Right, which is what the Q stands for, in case anybody was curious. <laughs> but it makes it uh, makes it easy to identify me. Um, so, I'm at, so I have a blog, and every day just about I'll post photos. And I initially thought I'd just post photos as like a gallery, but then I started writing little stories to go with the with the, each photo. And sometimes I'll tell cool facts about the photos or where I what I was doing when I thought did it or what I was thinking about as I wrote the blog because I don't write these in advance and I usually write them stream of consciousness style so that the tone definitely reflects who I am um, and I'm available in other places Facebook and Instagram um, mostly with Michael Q. Powell or some variation there of um, okay <clears throat> we're gonna get people to follow you and we need to get people to follow you on TikTok so that we don't have to do okay, yeah, so we don't have to do it this way I think I was 
like six followers or maybe eight followers. For a while, I thought I was the oldest person on TikTok. But I might be. But, uh, <laughs> I don't think so. I don't no, think so. maybe not. They, they, maybe a few more, but uh, yeah. Um, okay, yeah, last. So, so that's a, yeah. So that's there, and it's you know constant every almost every day I'm doing it. It, it gets posted there. Um, and the the as a result of that though, it's totally because of the blog. The photos are totally searchable. So if you were to type in Mike Powell Dragonfly, you'd actually come across lots of on Google. Um, you'd come across lots of my stuff. So that's one way to find me is um, you know Mike Powell Bald Eagle, and you'll find lots of. Uh, Oh. There are other Mike Powells, um, including the former record holder in the long jump. Oh, I thought that was you. I thought that was you. <laughs> I thought, I thought you were talented. Wait, I always thought you were the long jump guy. Wait, no, what? No, no. And, uh, and Colin Powell's son, Michael, was uh, head of the FCC during the famous Janet Jackson wardrobe malfunction uh, oh. at, the, at the Super Bowl incident with... Um, so. Um, but I, I, I have to tell people all the time, I'm not Colin Powell's son, but I'm only half the man he is, so you can call me semi-Colin Powell. <laughs> true, true. All right, last last image, and then we got to hop. And let's talk about the process on this one, too. Okay, so this is a... This is not in France, if I'm if I'm correct. This is in Washington State. Yes. Yes. Um, I, I took a trip to Washington State. Uh, well, in and, and last year, and then I, I went by plane this year. I drove there, and this was a. Uh, yeah, it was in, it was just north of Seattle. Um, there was a famous bridge there, and I decided I want to take a picture of it. So um, anything that catches my eye is likely to be a subject for a picture taking. If it went in doubt, I'm ready to uh, take a picture of it, even if I don't know what it is. Uh, I practice what I call the law of the old west: shoot first, ask questions later. <laughs> um, so some of the time I'll, I'll have to investigate. So what is that bird that I'm taking a picture of, or what is that bug? Or what is that bridge? So yeah, that um, this bridge is called Don't Jump Bridge, uh, where people yell "Don't jump." <laughs> the long way down. Yeah, it's a long way down. I'm just kidding. Um, uh, real quick, this 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 this, pi this was a picture initially, but we up. ran it through an AI process that actually makes it look like a painting. And it is really cool to see when you look up close. So when people see it from far away, it looks like a photo. But when you get up close, you see brush strokes and everything. It looks really neat. Um, we have that process done on just a couple of your images. Um, but we just do that for a variety sake. But your, the photography that you take is, is stunning. We appreciate you, Mike, as yes. being a contributor to uh, a part of our creative com community. Um, and we can't wait to get a couple more images. You know what's on my wish list. Ah, <laughs> uh, yes. You know what's on my wish list. You gotta dust, you gotta dust off those hard drives. Yeah. You gotta do some <laughs> sleuthing. Point, you know, as I say, I've been taking pictures for the blog for 10 years and you're asking for something that are like eight years old. <laughs> I know, but you got this fox picture, which is just amazing. Uh, I know. It's a, uh, a fox on a frozen pond. You actually have the... Do you still have that as the... Uh, I do. It's on the header. It's because people. it's a constant reminder. It's yeah, a, I know. It's a, you know, try to guilt me. That, well, you I, know... I don't have an excuse anymore now that I'm retired. <laughs> <laughs> Well, we appreciate you. Thank you for taking the time to join us here today. And again, everybody, follow Michael. Go to his blog. Follow him on TikTok, Michael Quinton, uh, Michael Quinton Powell on TikTok. Give him a follow so we can get him on the right way as a guest. Um, and then also make sure you check out his blog. Subscribe to his blog. He's got new photos just about every day, and he's been doing it for 10 years. You can look at his, his images. They are absolutely stunning. Go to michaelqpowell.com. That's michaelqpowell.com. And uh, show them your love. Give a little feedback on each of those blog posts. And we appreciate him tremendously. Thank you, Michael. And we will see all of you on our next Creative Corner. Bye, everybody. Bye. Bye.
we sign off.